And that is, is that error that we used to get back in Oracle 9, which was you do some sort of pay, table level operation. You move a table, you drop a partition, etc., and the index becomes marked unusable and you get told, okay, you have to rebuild the index. In Oracle 10, we made the default. We said we introduced a parameter called skip unusable indexes. In fact, that parameter was there before Oracle 10, but it always used to be set to false. In Oracle 10, we defaulted it to true. We decided it was better for you to actually not use the index than to get your applications crashing. There are some exceptions to avoiding skip unusable indexes. So let's look at them as an example first. Just to set the scene, you can see there that I, my skip unusable indexes parameter is actually set to the default, it's set to true. I haven't changed it in any way. I'm gonna create a table called T. It's got 10,000 rows in it. It's got two columns, X and Y, and I'm gonna create an index on T. Nothing complicated there. Let's prove that index can actually be used. So I'll do auto trace on and select star from T where X equals one, two, three. And as you can see, it's going to use the index. Index range scan, that all works fine. That makes sense. Now I'm gonna make that index unusable. Now I've done it explicitly here. If I had done, if this was a petition table and I'd done a move or you know, move compress, etc., the same thing would happen, but I've just done explicitly set the index to unusable. And as you can see, nothing's wrong with a select statement. I can still do a select star from T with the exact same query. I just don't get to use the index anymore. I'm doing table access full as opposed to using the index. And just because the index is unusable, it doesn't stop me doing operations on the table. You can see that I can still insert new values. That's no problems. Where things get a bit complicated, and this is the case in all versions of Oracle, is when I have things like unique indexes. So I create a unique, unique index on, on column Y this time. So we have a unique index. As you can see, I'll turn auto trace on, the same query works. This time I'm using column Y, not column X and I'm doing an index unique scan, all works fine. I'll make this index now unusable. Select statements work fine as before, but if I try to do an insert statement now, I can't do the insert. This is really just setting the scene for this question. This is no different to, this, this is how Oracle has been pretty much all the time. With an unusable index, if it's a normal index, uh, not unique index, you can still select from the table, you can still insert, update, delete. In fact, so a normal index, you can select, you can insert, you can update, you can delete. With a unique index, you can still select from the table, as we saw, it just does a table access full or, or uses some other optimization method if there were other indexes available. But you can't do insert, update, and delete. Now that seems to make sense to me. How do I enforce any kind of uniqueness if the index that is used to enforce that rule cannot be accessed? You could make an argument that, well, maybe there should be some way of deferring that. The way you would do that is actually create a non-unique index, put a unique constraint on top of the table, defer the constraint, allow the inserts, and then reactivate the constraint at commit time. That It can be done. I'm just saying that with a unique index, by default, it makes sense to me that you can't do any kind of DML because it's impossible to validate the uniqueness um, of that index. But here's where things were interesting. This is why I thought I'd put it in the office hours queue today. It had, we're getting it on a select statement. Now I've just said that it doesn't matter if it's unique or non-unique, select statements work, but they're saying they were getting it on a select statement. Let's look at why that's the case. So I've dropped the table, I'm creating it exactly as before. I've got my table called T, 10,000 rows. It's got an index IX1 on the column called X. I'm gonna make it unusable. So it's just a normal index, not the unique index, so it's not gonna be affected by the insert, update, delete stuff. And here's where the problem comes in. Hints, a hint is actually a directive to the optimizer. It's saying, if you tell me to use the index called IX1, that is my option. That's what I have to do. And so this is where you can get caught out with a hint. I've said, use the index IX1, it's unusable. The optimizer doesn't go, oh, I'll bypass that and do a full table scan or come up with some other optimization method. It respects your hint directive and says, yep, definitely I'm going to use the index, finds that the index is unusable, and of course, then you're in trouble. It doesn't matter even if you use what I call the preferred or alternate syntax for a hint. And this is a bit of a sort of a segue here in the sense that if you're ever using hints, and hopefully it's rare, this is the hint text you should use if you're using an index hint. Rather than saying hint tix1, which says this is the name of the index I want to use, you can actually nominate the leading columns of the index. So the second example there says select index on the table called t, choose the index that starts with the column called x. And I can put multiple columns in there if I want. 
why do I prefer this, even though it doesn't solve this particular problem we're having, is if your DBA goes in and renames an index, then this hint becomes immediately broken. Whereas this one simply says, yep, if I can still find an index that leads with an X, I'm gonna be able to use that hint. I like this because it's probably closer to the reality. We generally don't say, that index over there is the one I want. We actually say, I need an index on this column. That's where I want to hint at. So I always prefer that second syntax. Having said all that, it doesn't solve this problem. If I do a hint and that hint on the index is unusable, then you're going to get the error. Even if you have skip unusable indexes equals true. What have we learned? Hints are bad. Generally try avoid them if you can, because you can get into these kind of messes. So how do we fix it? It's really simple. From 11G onwards, if you make the index invisible, now, even if you nominate the index with a hint, the invisible overrides that and simply says it's not available to you. It's almost like the index did not exist. So in this case, you can see when I do a trace only explain, even though I've said use the index called IX1, we ended up with table access full. So that's pretty cool. You can see that if you have hints in your code, hopefully you don't, um, and you set those indexes unusable, you could end up with some grief and hopefully using invisible indexes can help you work around that, of course, while you go back and fix the code to remove those hints and work around the issue in what I would call the proper way.